Salotto Rotary oggi ospita Sita Patella, Oriente Occidente, con il suo The Right of Spring. So thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. Uh, let's start with the first question, which is uh, if you have to choose three words for your path, for your artistic path, for your career, which words could you choose? I think the first word that comes to mind is slow because I had a very slow and steady journey and I think has sort of happened overnight. This is two words, but hard work because it is a very difficult thing to make a career in a very niche art form away from where it, that art form is born and um, varied. I've done so many different kinds of things with different companies and choreographers. I feel really lucky that it's been very a big range of things I've tried. So the relationships are the heart of this festival of this year. And what kind of relationships uh, are in your The Rite of Spring? So I think the most clear relationship in The Rite of Spring, my version of it, is the relationship between Stravinsky's music, which has been iconic in the 20th century, sort of Western classical and beyond it's influenced so much Western art and the South Indian classical dance form of Bharatanatyam. And it's, they're coming both from a classical and classic, sort of classicism of their background. However, they've never been brought together in this way. So I think that's the most exciting relationship is bringing these two really rich and powerful art forms together without changing them in their DNA. So I haven't, i don't like to think of it as a fusion. It's really a, a, a relationship of partners. And um, I think what's also beautiful is that the cast is from so many different places. So even though the art form is the relationship that links us all, we are bringing in different sort of different, different energies from our different places that we live. And yeah, I think, it, like I said, for me, it's this vibrant, sort of bringing together of life-affirming music and dance that is both really powerful, the rhythmic nature of both forms, the power and expression of both forms coming together, it just works. And what kind of inspiration are there on the stage with the dancers? So my take on the Rite of Spring has been through more of a sort of Eastern philosophical lens. So most of the other versions in terms of dance and the contemporary and ballet world focus on the chosen one being sacrificed to the earth so that spring can come. And it's this individual that is chosen and sacrificed. Whereas in my version, I, I see this more as a sort of cycle rather than this sort of one directional journey. And so the community chooses the chosen one or the nature chooses the chosen one and then we follow their journey and then the community give themselves to the chosen one in the way that many cultures might give themselves to a deity or a king or, a, or that sort of thing. And so by the end, um, the community want to give themselves up to the chosen one and sort of go into a reverse birth so that everything can start again. So this cycle of birth, death and life continue onwards. And so there's not this sense of final, it's a sense of something will come again and will repeat itself. And uh, my last question is to the choreographers and the dancers always, is always what kind of relationship do you have with dance? What dance uh, does mean in your life? This is a really big question <laughs> because I, you know, I don't know if it's a singular relationship. It changes not just over time, but within the space of a day as well. It can be love and hate, but it's vital. So it has to be there regardless of whether I love it or hate it. I can't imagine life without it. <laughs>